Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today, we're gonna to learn how to draw complex shapes in Lightburn. We're gonna use about four or five different tools that you probably already know, put them together, and within minutes, we'll be able to go ahead and sketch out this outline so I can use it to generate a foam insert for the bottom of my toolbox where I uh, hold all of my lenses. It's time to get that stuff cleaned up. Let's see how easy it is to do. Let's jump into Lightburn. Okay, so once we have all of our rectangles built, we need to start sizing each one of these rectangles. So all I did is I went in and I took all these measurements for all these different sections with my measuring tool. And now I'm gonna use the dimensions tool to size each one of these rectangles. So we'll zoom in here. I'll select the first rectangle. And our dimensions for that very top section is gonna be 0.82. I hit tab to go down below and 0.95. Enter. And now I've got this first section of the of the uh, lens tube done. We'll go down to the next one, and it's going to be 1.19, 5.23. And you can see that we'll go ahead and do all the rest of these. And once we get them all done, I'll show you how we're going to start to line them up and uh, get them ready to uh, combine them all and make that shape. Okay, so I've come in here and I've dimensioned all of these different rectangles. So they're all the correct size. I didn't worry about alignment or if they were close together. Just doesn't matter yet. I'll show you how we do that. But before we get going any further, I'd like to mention when you're putting in your dimensions of a rectangle, especially when you're freeforming it, meaning that you're typing in the, the uh, numbers in here for your width and height, be sure your lock is unlocked because if you don't, when you feed in that first and second, uh, you'll feed in your first uh, number for width and then if you go to your height and key it in, if this lock is uh, down, if it's locked, it'll mess up your first number. So when you're putting in both the width and the height on anything, and it's got to be very specific, you want to make sure that this little lock is unlocked. Otherwise, it will change it, uh, and you'll never get your, your dimensions dialed in. So make sure that this is all always unlocked when you're putting those in. So the next tool we're going to do or learn about is called the snap, the object snap tool. I use this tool a lot on a lot of different things. Matter of fact, I leave it on almost all the time. It's located up here where these little gears are, and if you click on that, it's going to open up uh, some settings, and your snapping to objects dialog box is just right here. And if it's not turned on, go ahead and turn it on, and you'll see how uh, beneficial it can be. Um, what this does is um, it, one line will snap to another, and uh, so it can be very very helpful when you're doing things like what we're doing today. So make sure that your snap to objects is on. I'm going to say OK. And what this does is what I want to do now is I want to bring this rectangle and have it touch the uh, rectangle above it. So I'm basically going to scoot all these together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this rectangle here and you see how it just snapped to it. Now, I don't care if it's aligned or not. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to use an alignment tool to make sure that they're all centered. But I'm just going to grab this, snap it, grab this, snap it. You'll notice that the snapping tool, um, you got a little hash mark if it's not in the middle. If it's in the middle, it will show you uh, the center sign. You can go there. Snap. See, now it's snapping to the center of that upper. There we go. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, just to assure that all of these shapes are aligned, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select them all. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to um, look for the center alignment tool. And it looks like all of them have been centered. 
So between the object snaps, now the only thing we've got left to do is go ahead and make this nose cone uh, out of this little rectangle and this little rectangle, and I'll show you how to do that next. This nose cone is our next little challenge here. Won't be hard to do at all. A couple of things we're going to learn on in this area is to learn how to uh, some basic node editing. If you haven't learned how to edit nodes in Lightburn, it's something that you should learn how to do. It's uh, very powerful. It's easy to do once you kind of understand the concept. So the first thing that I did is I took this little rectangle and I moved it up to the middle. Uh, this rectangle is in the middle of this line right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me a reference so I can start a single line to go from here to up in this corner and from here to go up to this corner. And that gives me this uh, vertical line here. So I'm going to go up to the pencil tool. I'm going to start right here, right at this intersection. If you have your snap to objects on, um, it will automatically go to that intersection. And I'm going to go here. Press the create key. Here. Press the escape key. I need to turn these red. Forgot to do that, so got to be all the same layer here. Okay. All right. So in order to edit this rectangle that we uh, drew initially into this uh, couple of triangles, uh, one thing you've got to remember is anytime you're going to e node edit a shape like a circle or a rectangle, you have to convert it to a path first. And so if I would go into node editing right now, you can see that I don't have any nodes to edit. And that's because this is a shape and it has to be a path before you can uh, insert nodes, delete nodes, delete sections, those kind of things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here to edit, convert to a path. And now you see I've got some nodes here that I can, I can have the ability to... Uh, edit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go right to this intersection right here and you see I've got a uh, my crosshair or my pointer changes to a crosshair and I'm going to go ahead and press the I key insert a node there. I'm going to come over here and press the I key to insert another node. And now since this is a separate section from this from this all I have to do now is hover over this section between this node and this node and hit the D key, not the delete key, but the D key on your keyboard. And you notice that that disappears. Lexi, D, D. Now, the only thing I've got left to do is get out of that node editing mode, go back to my selection mode. Select the little triangle that I or rectangle that I used for a glide and hit the delete key. And now I have my nose cone. The next thing we're going to work on is this air supply 90 degree elbow right here. What I've done is I've um, I've drawn two rectangles. That's a one inch by a half an inch. That's what uh, it was a one inch from here to here, and then it was a half an inch thick, and it was one inch from here here and it was half an inch thick. So what I want to do is I want to uh, get the basic shape of this connector with these two rectangles. If you have your object snapping uh, on, this will be a piece of cake. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this lower rectangle and I'm going to come down here to this lower uh, right hand corner and corners will snap to corners. So I'm going to just push down my mouse button and you'll notice that this is going to snap right together just like that. Now I've got the basic shape of this elbow and what I've got to do is be able to combine these shapes so we get rid of these middle horizontal and vertical lines. Well, I've got one last piece before we start combining these shapes and it's this little outer edge radius right here. So what I did is I measured this 
and it was uh, just at 0.23, but I'm going to bump it up a little bit because it's I want enough room in the in the foam insert that this is not going to be a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to our circle tool and we're going to hold down the shift key while we drag the circle out. That way it creates a perfect circle. And you can see that it's at 0.67 and 0.67. So all I'm going to do, if you have this locked, all I've got to do is change one of them. So I'm going to just change one to 0.5 and hit tab. And you notice that it changed both the width and the height because you have the aspect ratio locked. Okay. Then I'm going to come up to the selection tool. And if we have our object snaps on, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to snap that right to the middle of that intersection. Now, when we when we merge all of these shapes, you're going to have this nice radius right here that will mimic this radius here. Okay, I've rearranged things, and there's one last thing we've got to do before we actually join all these shapes. One thing you always want to remember, anytime you're, you're doing some node editing uh, and you're converting a rectangle or a circle or any kind of shape to a path, um, when you do those net, excuse me, those node edits, it breaks apart uh, the shape, so to speak. So you'll notice if I click, if I come up here to my selection tool and I click on a rectangle, it's all one uh, line, continuous line. They're all connected. Okay. And this is a real important concept when you're using the weld tool is you have to be able to make sure that all of your shapes are are truly uh, connected. If we come down here to this nose cone that we made, uh, you'll notice that it's individual lines. And so if we tried to combine the shapes of all of these into one, this lower nose cone section is not going to work because these are not joined. They're all individual lines. So how we do this is I'm just going to select all of those individual lines that we node edited, and I need to combine them into one uh, entity. So I'm going to come up here and go edit, and I'm going to say auto join selected shapes. And if it worked properly, if all your uh, lines are touching and those kind of things, I should be able to come in here and select it now. And you see that I can select this line and all of the sh uh, lines are selected now. Matter of fact, if we move this down, you can see that this is, is all one shape. Now, when we go to combine all these shapes for an outline, it should work. But if we would have tried to do that before, it would have just erased this lower section because we didn't combine this into a shape that was just all individual lines. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to snap this back into the middle. And now we should be able to come in here and uh, join this section to this section. And so since I've got two rectangles and a circle here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to combine this into a group for just a minute, just to move it over. So I've, I've grouped it. Then I'm going to come over. You notice I've got my center. I'm going to move it over to the center of that, of this vertical line here. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to ungroup it. And the reason why I needed to ungroup it is if this is grouped, it won't combine properly. Okay. So now at this point, we've got all of our shapes uh, combined, they're all centered. We should be able to come up here and highlight and select the whole bunch of shapes and come over here to our weld tool. And if um, we've done things properly, we should be able to click the weld tool. Boom. Now we've got an outline of that lens, including the uh, air supply elbow. And there you have it. Well, as you can see, by combining um, 10 different rectangles, uh, along with using about six different tools in Lightburn, learning how to node edit simple shapes, you'll be able to create complex shapes like this uh, laser lens tube. 
from this, now what I'm going to do with uh, this shape is I'll incorporate it into a foam insert for the bottom of my uh, toolbox where I keep all my laser supplies. If I open another uh, file here, you can see now I've got a layout for all of my lenses, my mirrors, my extra mirrors, my extra focus lens, um, anything that I might need to um, maintain my laser. This was a great little uh, project. I hope you learned something. As always, if you please like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Have a great day.